Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Java for Testers tutorial, we are going to learn about hash set in Java. So previously we have understood about the array list, whereas wherein we have understood about the list of elements that you can store in the array list and it's basically the dynamic. So you can store the elements and the size of the list will update accordingly as per the element insertions that you will do right now internally there is a lot of technical details that go within the array list but as a testing tutorial we are not going into too much detail of the array list if you are interested in digging deeper i would recommend going through the advanced sections or going to the java docs to get all the details now what when we talk about hash set hash set is basically a set and when we say the difference between the set and list so say for example if i say hash set right so it is a set and when we say set is basically a term mathematically which is used which doesn't allow duplicate values to be stored right so in the list or when we say array list we were able to store duplicate elements in the array list right in the set if you are say for example storing four different values right so for example i store 10 20 30 40 right and then again 40 so in the set what will happen is it will basically store only 10 20 30 and 40 so it will discard any of the duplicate values if say for example you have another 40 another 40 so it will only store one of the duplicate value so in the set it is sure that the values that are there in the set are unique values they are not duplicate values okay that's the whole point of having a set over the list now when we say hash set so hash is the hashing algorithm so it's this particular set the way it stores these values within java it is following the hashing algorithm and that's why it's known as hash set if you want to learn detail go through the java docs and you'll get a lot more detail but it is not required as part of the testing or the automation engineer okay so in the terms of array list what used to happen is if i'm storing 10 20 30 40 40 and then again 40 so even though there are duplicate values here the list will basically have all of these values in there okay so 30 40 40 and 40 okay so the list array list will have all of these values whatever values you want to insert even the duplicate value so that's the basic difference between the set and the list so let's quickly go ahead to the eclipse and understand how you can create the hash set how you can add the values and what are different methods available in java for working with the hash set okay so here let me create quickly a class and i will say hash set demo include the main method finish it right so now if we quickly go through the documentation right so this official documentation of java is the best place to basically refer to all of the knowledge right because if you go to any other website they have picked up all the information from this particular documentation now it has been simplified in you know a simple language but this documentation is vast enough and gives you a lot of information there okay so on this documentation here is so just go to docs.oracle.com and say for example let's let's go to the location here java java se and you'll see you have this latest release right so let's go to the jdk 17 documentation because if there are any additions or deletions that will be available here in the api documentation we will just search for hash set right and you will see classes and interfaces so let's go to this hash set and you'll see it is a class right so it's a class and then this is basically the concept of generics wherein this is elements you can say what type of elements you want to store in this particular set you can specify that where you want to store the string or integer you can specify here right then if you go through the details here right so it it is a class which implements the set interface right so set interface is what is being implemented by this particular class it is backed by hash table actually a hash map instance okay then other important thing it is not synchronized which we'll cover later but if you see the constructor summary so hash set is basically there are multiple constructors here and you can specify so by default when you create a hash set object it will create an empty set which has the de default capacity of 16 right so by default there are 16 16 capacity and the load factor is 75 now what exactly is 0.75 load factor it is basically how full the set will be when the size will be automatically incremented right so initial 
capacity is 16 and load factor is 0.75. So as soon as the 0.75 elements are being added, so that means basically 0.75 16 is 12. So as soon as the 12 elements have been added into the hatch hash set that you have created, it will automatically increment to the other or it will automatically adjust the size or increment the size of the hash set. Okay. If you know that the capacity of your hash set will be, you know, say for example, 100 elements, then you can specify the initial capacity with this particular constructor or you can also specify the load factor with the capacity as well as the load factor. Okay. So you can go through these documentation, very helpful and it will give you the method summary as well. Okay. Now let's go ahead and quickly understand how you can create the object of the hash set, how you will add the elements and what all operations you can perform. So in order to create, as we know, the hash set is a class, right? So it's a class which this class implements the set interface. Okay. So it's a class. We can create an object of the class, right? So we can simply say hash set, right? And if I want to store only integers in this particular hash set, then I can simply provide integers. Okay. And specify the name, right? And then I'll simply say, I'll create a new object. So new hash set and I'm storing integers. So again, integer followed by parenthesis and semicolon. So if you just hover over, you simply have to import this hash set from java.util. Okay. As soon as you will import the hash set, the error will be gone. And now this is basically the reference, the object reference that has been created. So this etset set demo, if we can call all the methods, right, that have been defined in this particular class, right? So we can simply say etset set demo dot and you will see all the methods that have been defined. So to add the elements in this particular set, right? You can simply say at add, okay, and then add all on clear clone. So there are many methods that you can go through and understand, right? But we'll understand how we can add the elements. So simply say add and then specify the value that you want to add. Now, because we have specified that this particular set will accept integer, you will see the element integer is displayed. Now, if say, for example, I want to say, let's add 10 in there. Okay. So 10 will be added to this particular set. All right. Now, if say, for example, I want to add a string there. Okay. So say, for example, I want to add a string or CV 10. So you'll see the error will be displayed because this add method in type hash set integer, because we have defined that this will accept this particular set will accept only integer. This is integer set. So it won't accept any of the string values in there. Okay. So let's quickly go ahead and add more values in there. Okay. So let's change it to 20, 30, 40, and let's say another 40. Okay. So now if I want to print what is what are the values that have been added into this, this set? I'll simply say sys out and just say at set demo, right? Let's run it and you will see it has printed the values that are being stored in this particular set. And you'll see that it hasn't printed the values in the order. Okay. That's another important aspect of the set that it is first thing it is unindexed, right? So you will see that if we store the item into the list, they are stored as per the index. So you can fetch the values based on the index, but in the set, you can't access the items that are stored in the set based on the index because in set indexes are not exposed externally. So internally the storage happens based on the hashing algorithm and indexes are maintained, but externally they are not exposed. So you can't say that give me the value that is being stored in the index zero or one or two, right? And you see that the order that we have added these values, they are not stored in that same order, right? So if, if I run this, you will see that first I have 20, then 40, then 10 and 30, right? So based on the hashing algorithm, they are being the the items are being stored and they are not ordered in the way that you would be adding. So set is not ordered and you can't access the value based on the indexes as you can do in the list, right? So how can we basically fetch the items? So there are different ways. So first thing is we can use the for each loop. Okay. Or we can use the iterator. Okay. Before that, let's see how we can remove the values. Say so for example, I want to remove the values. Okay. So I'll say it's a demo and let's see if there is any method which says remove, right? So you'll see we have this method remove object, right? So if I have to remove the object, I'll simply 
simply say remove right and then specify the item that i want to remove what item i want to remove say for example i want to remove 10 from there so i'll simply say 10 right and run oh okay i need to print it again after removing right so let me print the set again save it run it again and you will see 10 has been removed from the set right so now if i want to print all the values that are stored in the set what we can do let's quickly understand so the first way we can do is we can use the iterator right so iterator we can simply say iterator and then define the iterator so i can say itr and on which particular set or which particular uh, set we have this at set demo right this is the variable that holds the set object right so i want to define iterator on this particular set so i'll simply say at set demo and then call the method iterator right so i can say dot dot iterator dot iterator and just import iterator okay from the java dot util okay so now we can simply iterate over this particular set okay so now what we can do is we can use simple while loop so while itr dot has next right so it will check if i say has next and hover over it it will say return true if the iteration has more elements right in other words it will return true if next would return an element rather than throwing an exception right so while there are elements i just want to print right so i can say sys out and print the values right so print the values that are there okay so iter iterator dot next so until the values are there just keep printing the values okay so there are there have been four values that have been added here then i have removed one so it should print the three values that are there in the set okay so you'll see it has printed 20 30 uh, and 40 right so these are these were the values and these values have been printed using the iterator okay so this is the first way very simple the next way is for each loop right so i can simply define a for each loop so i can simply say for and define so because we know that these are the integer values so i can say for integer int right and the values that are there so for each integer value within this particular set so just read it like that for each integer value that is within this particular hash set demo okay this is primitive data type so i have to just say a int demo okay so that it doesn't conflict make sure you never use any of that i just want to iterate over and the print values okay then i can say sys out and then i can say int demo right and that should print me the values that are stored in this particular hash set demo set okay so if i run this now you will see the output will be exactly similar okay so what how for each loop works is it will basically what you are saying is for each integer value that is there okay so you are just defining a you know integer uh, variable so you are saying for each integer value that is there within hash set demo just print that particular value okay so this is another way to print the values out of hash set the other important thing i want to cover is if you simply go to the methods that are cover that are available here right so you just type in at set demo and then dot you will see that you can play around with all the different methods so for example you want to clear the hash set you want to clone you you want to check the whether the set contains a particular value you can use this particular contains and then specify the object that you want to check that is there then there are many other methods that you can simply go ahead and practice and make sure that you understand hash set properly right you go through this documentation and read out the methods that are there and the return type to understand more details about hash set okay so that's all about the hash set in java i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching